Hello, my name is John Capobianco, and in the spirit of RAG and Raptor and Raft retrieval augmented approaches, let's take a look at RAC, Retrieval Augmented Consensus with Kubernetes. Now, let's break it down. I'm going to do Retrieval Augmented Generation. I'm going to upload documents. These documents are a variety of types, using a variety of loaders and splitters. And we're going to use local free private embeddings model in Instructor Excel. Give us our vectors. We're going to store all of this in the Chroma DB, another free private local open source vector store. Then we're going to use a series of Olama servers, another free private local open source AI utility. In this case, a server host small and large language models, which are, you guessed it, free and private and local and confidential open source. The weights behind these, they're training. Now, the idea is to use Kubernetes. One, to simplify and abstract all of this, so you just have to start a few different uh, lines of YAML code or adjust and a Python script for a streamlit application. Front end, rapid development and prototyping. So the idea is the user uploads a document. We go through RAG and now we can ask questions about document inference. So we're going to ask a question about a Cisco validated design for AI on FlexPod in the data center. That's going to be we're going to ask it a question about a protocol. Now, what I love about this approach is one, there is a, always a chance of hallucination or the AI not being for that specific set of egg implementation. A variety of things that could go wrong. You might not trust a singular AI's. What if we could get eight responses from eight disparate AIs from totally different organizations like Meta and Google and Microsoft and the open source community? Now, once we have those answers, what we're going to do is send them back AI, all of the answers, and the original question. The idea here is say, all of the other LLMs responses to the original question, we come to a consensus on the best answer. Each of them is going to do the consensus. Answer that prompt. We're going to do this again, hurdles all the way down, a third iteration for a final consensus. Pass the consensus answer, the original, and come up with a final agreement on the best or at least democratically selected answer to the original. Let's take a look at this. Now, if you want to see the back end and how this was built, the Kubernetes portion, I suggest you refer to my previous video on it. Okay, so we're in document Kate, right? This is the name of this particular implementation of Rack. Where we're going to upload a document and it's going to be this Cisco validated design. We're going to proceed to chat. Now, right now it is running through, and I'll show you the resources here the spike and the lift in memory. It is running through the retrieval augmented generation process, doing the embeddings, storing it in the vector store, that process. I have not invoked any Olama servers yet. Instructor Excel embeddings model and Chroma Deep as we load that PDF. Now, in just a few seconds here, I do have an opportunity to show you the Docker implement. So, in Docker, under settings, under Kubernetes, you can enable Kubernetes with Docker Desktop, which allows you to implement what I've done here. You can see I have different containers. And they are starting to, right, they've downloaded their models for the top. So this Olama container that has access to my GPU 
has been downloaded right llama three. That process has happened eight times. This is my streamlet, and you can see that it is doing some retrieval augmented generation logs, and finally my load balancer, my nginx front end that handles the round robin approach. In the code, this is not a lot. I think there's a misunderstanding that Kubernetes is extremely difficult. Um, in terms of building it and coding it, it's actually very abstracted. So I have a YAML file that defines my Nginx configuration that we need to apply before we bring up the pod. We have an Alama service, a load balancer to help round robin and make the API publicly available. And finally, my pod definition with some important settings in. Now, this Olama Keep Alive is very important because by default, after you generate a request from Olama, it keeps the model in memory for five minutes, which is an excellent approach. However, because I need to free those resources up immediately for the next LLM in line, I'm keeping alive a zero which tells it to immediately release them. Finally, I have my Python script and my Docker file. All the requirements are here in the requirements. This is all open source and on my GitHub. You could turn this on today. You could start contributing to it. The README is actually written. I did write a README file. Now, one thing is, in order to get my Docker Kate application access to you do need to add this additional NVIDIA daemon to your Kubernetes environment before you bring up the service or apply the Nginx or finally start the pod. I highly recommend the Kubernetes extension for VS Code, which is what I'm in now. And you can see under workloads, pods, I have my pod with 10 running. We click on this file. It will give you much more details about the service itself in Kubernetes. And you can watch this file as you bring up the service and see it transition from stop to start. You can also delete it here if you don't want to use. Now, let's go back to our question. So we're going to say, what can you tell me about the Rocky 2 protocol and its importance? in AI infrastructure? Send the question. What's interesting is we're going to see it peak and valley as each LLM rotates through the GPU. Now you can see the memory is climbed and the GPU, CPU itself is going to spike high and there is our generation and everything collapses down as we release the resources from the timeout. Now it's going to peak again as it hits the next AI. This is actually quite a, an effective way to compare how much resources each model uses, the quality of the output, um, how many characters and tokens each model has. This round robin approach really is an effective way to compare model um, resource you. So you can start to see here the Gemma original response does get the correct acronym and does have some great, you know, low latency, high throughput, converged fabric, lossless transport, and all these great answers. Now, unfortunately, the AYA model doesn't know. Now, AYA hasn't really been great for me in terms of retrieval augmented generation. I may rotate that model out with a different model if I find a, a more capable model. But um, I, you know, I am testing models, and, and that is a valid response. I don't know. But that will be considered with the, you know, that answer will almost be thrown out because of our Council of Oracle approach, right? We're going to send that along to the other AIs to get consensus. Here's Llama's three response. And again, low latency, high throughput, converged fabric, losses, transport, but in different words and with different details and a different explanation. A great way to really understand this is to take into consideration different AIs. Um, now, you know, root Ethernet services is incorrect here. 
What does LAMA 3 call it? Remote Direct Memory Access version 2. It doesn't mention the converged Ethernet. But that's why we're doing this as a, as a council. Ideally, the best answer, the most agreed upon answer, will have the correct information and throw away any or incorrect information. Now, this is going to continue. We're into the Gwen 2 response. And it looks fairly correct here. FC. By 3's response, the first small language. Tiny Llama's response. And now I think we're getting near the end and we should start getting the consensus. So here's the consensus response from Gemma, summary of Rocky V2 for AI infrastructure. And we start to get a more refined consensus-like answer. Now here's the Aya 2 that said it didn't know originally. But now here is what it's come up with for its consensus answer. So we've already improved the responses because Aya 2 was able to consider the council's responses the first time around. Now, it has actually given us quite a comprehensive answer now, right? Versus I don't know from original retrieval augmented generation. And you can see we're moving in and out of um, GPU here still. Now here's Wizards 2, and it has the full name, RDMA over Converged Ethernet version 2, right? So things are improving as we go. Objectively, that's not just my opinion. You can see that all of these answers are starting to get more and more refined and more and more um, of more and more quality. Yeah, and of course the dog's got to go off. So here's Tiny Llama 2. Now, we're going to go into the final round, the final consensus, and... what's happened here that's unfortunate the final consensus should be the consensus from the previous consensus so here we go here comes the wow revolutioning revolutionizing ai infrastructure and here is the final consensus with all of this great information takeaways and that's its version of the final consensus. So now here's Llama 3's final consensus. And we just keep iterating through the final consensus. How many times do we need to do that? I've chosen to do it three layers. The original question with RAG, the original council answers, and then a final converged best answer. Now, you know, I'm sort of left as to deciding how much I'd like to show all of this in part of the application and give the user all of that data. Uh, but I could choose to pick one of those final answers or find a way to rank the answers. You know, at some point I have to stop the iteration and present something to. Them. But as you can see, the quality did improve significantly. We're not really using that much more time in terms of latency. It's still very responsive and we're still getting more text that the human read than they can scroll or that it's generating if you're actually reading these. And again, a democratic consensus approach backed by Kubernetes. As models come and go, we can simply update those container definitions and scale this. The other terms of scale is that this is in a single pod. We could scale this out over multi-pods. We could scale this in the cloud and on-prem. It's totally agnostic given it's Kubernetes. This could run anywhere, anywhere. Now, without GPUs, it will fall back to C. I've run this on a smaller GPU. I intend on running this on, ideally, uh, something in the cloud very soon. So anyway. I just wanted to share this with you, Rack. Now, I would love to write the white paper to back this up and explain all of this and do the diagrams and the flows. That's coming. 
Uh, I just got this working this morning. I've been uh, up early working on this. Um, and thank you if you have any ideas, if you are a Kubernetes contributor or expert or know more about better approaches or slight ways to change this, it is open source. It's on my GitHub. Uh, and I would love to collaborate with you. Thank you.